Hey, good evening, folks. Welcome to the Let's Go Fishing Show. As you can see, my guest tonight's Mike Cox, and glad to have Mike again with me. Mike, good to have you with me. Good to be here again. All right. Uh, let me tell you right quick what's going on. We're pre-recording this show. Uh, it's Wednesday night. It's going to be playing tomorrow night. And uh, the reason being is so that the people here at the studio can get off for the 4th and, and, and uh, do the celebration. So there won't be any call-ins over here Thursday night when you watch this film because there won't be anybody here. Mike and I, are, well, okay, Mike, you, you go ahead and tell them where we're going to be. Well, I'm going to be on North Lake throwing. Uh, they can call you up there, I guess. Yeah, okay, I guess that'll work. Uh, uh, if you have any call or questions or anything, call me there on my cell phone, and, and that's what <laughs> our plans are, folks. We're all Friday like everybody else, and and uh, so uh, we've got plans with the family there on Friday, and and uh, we're going to take off from work Wednesday afternoon, okay. or Thursday afternoon, excuse me, and uh, head up to the lake and, and fish uh, as long as they'll buy. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, you know, get to get the, the long weekend started off right with a good fishing trip and that kind of thing. So, uh, uh, but yeah, we're pre-recording the show. It's on Wednesday. We're here on Wednesday night, and then you'll be watching it tomorrow night, uh, regular time. Uh, Want to say hello to Dad, Polly, Bill, and Gay up there in Clinton, and uh, um, hope they're doing good and and. Uh, um, got Bill is on the film with me there. We we're going to show it shortly that we filmed last week, and uh, uh, I know he's supposed to be on Del Hollow with uh, with another gentleman fishing. Uh, I think they may be back home by now. Uh, anyway, he went down there for a couple of nights to fish down there. Uh, I'll get a report from him later over the weekend and give it to you next week. Uh, we got uh, Bill and I are uh, in my boat, and Mike and Brad is uh, in Mike's boat, and that's the film we're going to be showing tonight. And uh, uh, before we get to the film, uh, right off the start there, we put the boats in. Mike has got his uh, uh, hillbilly invention. Yeah, yeah, hillbilly. That's right. Uh, uh, this uh, light thing that we've been talking about to get some more light in the boat for this uh, for the small camera when we use it because it seems like the VHS camera has a moisture detector in it, Mike, and, and uh, it cuts off on us after a couple of hours. It sure does. But you can't, can't see that good with it either. It ain't quite bright enough to yeah. show what we're wanting to see, so that's the reason we come up with the light to try to yeah. help that situation out. Uh, anyway, I got that light on film, just a little bit of it, but uh, uh, there was some some good work that Mike done and, and, and a little bit of time involved, and, and he's got that thing setting up in this pedestal there in the floor, and, and it's up overhead, and, and uh, got a switch there, turns it off and on, so it's really, it's a pretty nice little setup. Uh, I will say that, but you'll see it when we start showing the film. Uh, and, and that kind of thing. And, and before we do that, I want to say this. Um, you know, uh, the 4th of July is, is a, uh, going coming up here Friday. I uh, want to be thankful for uh, their veterans and, and uh, uh, the ones that sacrificed uh, uh, for this country. And, and we appreciate the opportunity, Mike, to have what we got. No doubt about that. Yeah. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, uh, we, we it, it's a great country, and uh, uh, we want, we're very thankful uh, for the sacrifices that have been made uh, for us to be able to do this show and enjoy the fishing and, and, and the water and, and the whole thing. So uh, uh, with that said, uh, before we get into the film, we want to talk a little bit about safety. Oh, Lord, yes. Yeah. It's going to be a bad weekend. And Everybody needs to be on their toes about the safety out there. There ain't going to be such a crowd even on the lake and on the roads and everything. So they need to be extra careful. 
uh, we were on North uh, Saturday night, and we got in the water probably about nine o'clock, right about there, some you know, pretty close to it, and. Uh, they had the big fireworks down at Sequoia Boat Dock, yep. and it was two o'clock that morning or later before the boats quit running. Yes, and uh, uh, so you know, I think um, I'm not for positive sure, but I think there's some fireworks planned for Stardust Friday night, uh, and, and I know you know we know they got. Uh, the fireworks in Knoxville, the fireworks in Clinton, uh, La Follette, I think a couple of the boat docks over on the La Follette side of North has got some fireworks planned. Uh, and, uh, you know, anywhere that you're involved in that on the water, you need to really be real cautious about what's going on with your boats and, and that kind of thing. Make sure you got safety gear. Uh, checking your fire extinguisher, uh, you know, you may not have looked at it all year, but right now before you get out there, it'd be a good time to do that. Uh, make sure everybody's got life jackets that needs them, uh, you know, one for every person on your boat, and 12 and under, they've got to have their zone. So, uh, uh, you know, just, just some good tips, uh, because there was a lot of boats on Norris Lake Saturday night, Mike, up into Sunday morning. And uh, like I said, it was after two o'clock, and they still were coming around to being there at point nineteen. Yeah. So uh, that water really gets rough when you get that many boats out it, there running. It? It, it it sure does. It never con you know it never slicks off. It just keeps rolling and getting bigger all the time. So uh, you've got a small boat to be best to just sit and wait and, and let it calm down before you try to take off in that. Uh, especially if you've got it loaded heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely for a fact, and, and you know, we're all guilty of that. A lot of times we'll go down there when normally we run around with two or three, four people in the boat, and then all of a sudden we're going to watch fireworks, and there's seven or eight, Mike. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh, you know, you're pretty well, you're kind of overloaded at that point, and, and uh, uh, with, with a smaller craft, and, and so, you know, uh, it, it could take on water real quick. Okay. And, uh, uh, so you want to be prepared for that, uh, you know. But just just think a little bit before you you get in, you know, put yourself in harm's way. Uh, you know, like he said, it doesn't wouldn't take you. It, just wait a few minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes for kind of the crowd to calm down or what have you, uh, and that kind of thing. So uh, uh, just do be careful, folks. Just wanted to throw that out at you, something to think about. There. A lot of people uh, out on the water at that time, and and you're trying to get back, uh, following the river channel back to the there. I know at Kingston, a lot of people comes from down the lake, and and they're trying to get back down there, and all the boat ramps close around, close or full. So, you you know, and, and same way at Point 19, uh, down the Anderson County Park. Uh, Boats coming from the Hickory Star Way, Andersonville Way, everybody converging down the river there. So, you know, it, it, and, and same way at Loudon Telecom. Oh, like, yeah. it, get, it gets crowded quick. So uh, just thought we'd throw that out there uh, uh, since, uh, you know, uh, the water is everything. And, and we know we've been out there a lot, uh, several times, 4th of July, and, and uh, we know how congested it can get. And, uh, uh, you know how bad it is so uh just want everybody to be careful all right herschel uh you want to take us to the film folks We've been working on this. Mike has uh, talking about light for the uh, uh, the small camera. So uh, Mike's come up with the light there. As you, yeah, there you go, Mike. Looks like that's going to work pretty good. Ah, uh, he's got his light pole there in the middle of the boat, the switch and everything. So uh, looks pretty good. All right, we're going out here, and I've got Bill with me, and 
Mike and Brad, and we're going out here and see if we can find some fish. That's right. All right. What are you thinking, Bill? Buddy, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm dead right now, son. I've been fired up all day. All right, buddy. <laughs> we're going after him, Bill. All right, son. I'm looking forward to it. All righty. Folks, Bill's got our first fish on here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. What about that, Bill? Now, oh, well, son of a gun. He just quick released. Quick release. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Bill. <laughs> All right, folks, Bill's got another little fish here. Now, yeah. Bill's doing a little something different. He's throwing a dad gun spinner bait on me here now. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. Right. I've caught how many of them on it there, Steve, old buddy. Yes, sir, buddy. It's a, it's a purple and black with a purple chunk on it. All right. Good color combination. Yeah. Well, this time of year it is. All right. Look at that, old buddy. He's small, but he's... he's, he's He's almost too small for that uh, that big bait there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We we'll get try to get another. He's got a pretty good fish on here this time. Yeah, he's a pretty good fish. Over All right. Down there. Yeah, boy. All right. Back here where I can see him. Yeah, buddy. Good yeah. boy, Bill. That's all right. There, right, we'll take that now. Yes, sir. We'll. Yeah, buddy. All right. Yeah, boy. All right, folks. Old Beagle's got another fish on here. Oh, buddy, that's a pretty good fish, too, Steve. Pretty good fish. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Jack. Yeah, man. Yeah, All righty. He got, he got a little shoulders on him. Yeah, boy. That old round fly with that there. Whoop chunk there has started to pan off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a few more bites now. We yeah. just get a little better with it. Yeah. All righty. Uh, there's one thing I had him pretty good. Yeah, you got him hooked <laughs> good, Bill. There he is. All right, buddy. Okay, old Steve just caught this one right here. All right. Bill's holding the fish up there, and pretty good fish, ain't he, Bill? Yes, sir. He's a nice, good, nice, healthy fish. All right. Toss him back in. Okay, buddy. All okay. right. Folks, Bill's got a good fish on here. Yeah. yeah. Got some shoulders on him, ain't he, Bill? Yeah, he sure has. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah boy. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, he, he, he don't want he won't. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. All right. That's three fish back to back, folks. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. All right, Billy. Yeah, boy. Come here. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to try to get there. We go. All right. That old brown pork chunk. Off, yeah, boy, right? Bill. That's a good one. All right, man. Back in the water. Back in the water. Oh, Bill's got a big fish on here now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. Spin bait. Yeah. Oh, son. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah. And Bill, you ain't supposed to catch him on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, old boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, boy. All right. Now, Mike, I'll show you. They'll hit that spinnerbait. Oh, they'll, they'll hit that spinnerbait, son. They'll mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, yeah, sir. That, they'll, that's just... All right. Yeah, boy. That's a nice one. Nice. All right, Bill. Back in the water with him. All right, old boy. <laughs> yep. Well, all right. <laughs> yep. Bill, I believe we got back in the water before I got him. I might have got him on camera there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bill. <laughs> what do you think, Bill? Uh, pretty good fish, ain't he? Pretty good fish, son. Heavy. He's getting his weight back from the spawning time, too, son. He's, yeah. He's a nice and 
Yes, I, I was going to make Steve learn me how to operate this camera <laughs> so I, it don't look like a, that. that, that I, uh, Bill's a catch of the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Here, it's yeah. All right. He's a dandy, though. All right, Bill. We'll throw him back. All right, old boy. All right. Thanks, Bill's got it. Ah, that gum it, Bill. <laughs> but we are having a hard time holding on to these fish. Sure are having a hard time holding on to them. Hey folks, I'm here at uh, Reynolds Racing in Moraine. We've got uh, the owner Glenn Reynolds here, and Glenn, you got some uh, July the Fourth tips for us, and and uh, some things on uh, construction, boat construction. So uh, go right ahead. Okay, we're going to have a, a July July the Fourth sale. In fact, we're going to go up all during the month of July. But we pride ourselves in offering high tech, special setup boats, and let's just talk about our pontoons. My competition, as it shows here. All right, we we'll go to the poster. Use plywood and cross members, and we get up to 35% better fuel mileage. Now here is a cutaway of, mm -hmm. of, of the air slots, all slick on the bottom, aluminum flooring. Mm -hmm. Now, if we had a car that would get 35% better mileage, everybody would flock to it. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, I hear a lot of complaints about poor mileage on pontoons. We got an answer for it. All right. What? I'm, I'm curious to see what that is. I'd like to have better mileage myself. Well, basically you use uh, a lighter, stronger boat okay. to start with. And of course all, uh, of course the new modern uh, Optimax and four stroke okay. engines gets a lot better mileage. So you couple those together and you have a very uh, efficient product. All right, folks, there you heard it. Uh, the man himself, I mean, Glenn's uh, knowledge sure pays off. So. Uh, Remember the Let's Go Fishing show and uh, Reynolds Racing in Marine. All right, folks, there you go. We got uh, the first part of the film over with, and uh, <clears throat> now we're going to uh, Mike and Brad, and uh, when Herschel gets ready, uh, and uh, so uh, we can uh, see how the light's going to work, Mike. Yeah, so check that out. Check it out. All right, Herschel, let's, let's look, look at it. <clears throat> you can look small now. Pounder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks a little bit like Steve. <laughs> yeah. Looks a little like Steve, huh? Mm -hmm. well, I'll tell you one thing.
All right, Brad's got one here. That's a pretty nice one there. Oh, yeah, he's jumping. Yes, sir. He's all right. Yeah, that's good. Yes, sir, that's real nice. All right. Good. Keep throwing at them. Go back and get another. That's on the green bunker. Green Well, we're looking for him. 
Ed, get him a nice one here. Real nice small man. Back loose and catch him again next time. All right, Bray, you doing all right? Get you another one. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning him loose right now. Like the fishing was pretty good. Oh, the fishing was great. Uh, only problem we had moisture in the camera again. Yeah. Uh, once that uh, camera showed moisture and we had to quit getting it out, them fish they started showing up. Uh, got so dang fast and furious there. I think I caught uh, five in a row right there on one spot, just about as fast as I could throw. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a ball up there at the time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Folks, you know, uh, I've had a few people say, you know, uh, even my wife, why you, you just fish on Norris? Well, uh, the reason for that is because we're catching. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I, I don't want don't want to take somebody with me and go out there and fish all night and not get a bite. Uh, we already know what's going on up there, and, and pretty well guaranteed we're going to get a bite. Uh, or at least we feel like we are. Uh, and you know that's what we want to do. We want you know people with us to catch fish. We want to catch them. So I, you know that's why we keep going back. Now it's been a while since I've night fished on Watts Bar, yep. and I guess it's been what two years, three years since we've been to Milton Hill. Uh, some of the boys at work had a little old night tournament over there, and we ran over there and fished it one night, and and uh, we practiced one night, and then went back the the next weekend, I think, and fished, and, and uh, so, you know, yeah, we, it, and, and we caught some little fish, but uh, uh, at Milton Hill, uh, and uh, we used to make quite a few trips over at Loudon. Oh, yeah, yes, sir, uh, sure we did. Mike. Had few, a heck of a good time over there. Yeah, a few years back, uh, because the smallmouth trail fished over there, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, shoot, we have went, we put in right there at that little old ramp on the Lenore City, Lenore City side of the of the river there and below the dam up there. Now they got a nice ramp in there, you know, over there on the below Teleco Dam in that uh, uh, right there below the dam, a nice place to put in. And, and uh, but look, man, we used to catch a heck of a lot of smallmouth right up and down that river right there, Mike. Yeah, some nice ones. Some nice ones. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, but anyway, we, we uh, you know, uh, I've had uh, the Adam Smith, the boy that I had on film here a couple of weeks ago from South Carolina, you know, just had a ball. He, I see him every day at work, and he just, you know, he's still talking about the fishing trip. Uh, he's going home this weekend and take that CD with him and show his family, and, and uh, so, you know, uh, and that's the kind of thing you want, and then uh, had... Uh, Kevin Ward and Tim Ward with me up there a few weeks ago, and I stopped by and saw them yesterday. And man, they just when we going back? <laughs> that's right. You know, everybody, when we going back? Mm -hmm. hey, that, hey, uh, so that's why we're fishing <clears throat> up there a lot, and and uh, and then we're working five or six days a week, and Saturday night's about the the only time we get off, Mike. Uh, that's for sure. You know, uh, and. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have to, uh, when they say work, we got to be there. Got to be there. And uh, uh, so that gives us Saturday night, and we just kind of plan things up. Well, we're going to go back. Now, I'll tell you what's fixing to happen here tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. We done told you we're going to be on the lake. Uh, uh, Bill's 
going to be with me, and I reckon Brad's going to be with Mike, and uh, uh, we planned this up last Saturday night, and, and uh, I guess Wesley, if he wants to go, he'll be with me, and and uh, we're going to go back up there and see if we can still catch them. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of them there. There's plenty of them there, yeah. We, we might try two or three new places and this week and see if they're there, too. Yeah, they ain't all got a job sore. No, no, they sure ain't, Mike. They they definitely not. Uh, but, folks, you know, that's that's the purpose of, of uh, us going back up there because right now, we're, as far as what we're getting to do, when we're getting to do it, uh, you know, there's no hunting and, and, and packing, you know, when you throw out there and get one on the first cast, you know where they're at. That's right. And uh, so uh, uh, that's that's kind of the thing we do. Now, up the film you saw there, old Bill caught three or four fish on a spinnerbait up there the other night, Mike. Yeah, I seen that. And uh, uh, I, I have got yet to tie one on, but I when I get up there Thursday night, I'll have one on. Well, it sure beats the heat, I tell you that. It's sure, and, and that's <laughs> another thing, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> But it's 90 degree weather out there, uh, and we've done it over the years. We know, and uh, uh, and it's a lot. It's re it's real comfortable, you know. Uh, 10 o'clock, it, it it starts cooling down, and by 12, 1 o'clock, man, it, you're in the, you know, the bugs are going in, and and you're out there, and it's cool, and and. Uh, as a matter of fact, we put a little light jacket on, baby. Light Mike. jacket on, or a long sleeve shirt. Long or something. sleeve shirt, or nothing. So, uh, uh, it, you know, it's comfortable. It's just absolutely nice, folks. It really is. So, uh, well, that's why we enjoy it so much, I guess. Uh, Mike, let's talk about this bait thing now because it got to be a, a big issue up there Saturday night. It did. And uh, we kept changing around because uh, there wasn't no moonlight hunting and, and trying some different baits to uh, find out what them fish was going to bite. It, uh, like I say, we went red and black, uh, brown on brown, uh, uh, purple on purple, purple and black, you know, just you can name a lot of different combinations and, and different colors that we tried and uh, uh, from heavier baits to lighter baits and everything else. Uh, trying to figure out what was wrong with them fish. They just couldn't find that bite. And uh, finally uh, got one to hit a brown. And uh, Brad had one to hit that black, solid black, which we figured that'd be the bait to use. And uh, I was talking to Wesley there, and he said, you finally caught one on a, a watermelon with a, a root, beer, root chunk. beer chunk on it. And uh, yeah. that's when I got back down in the boat and uh, took the brown off of the brown jig and put a root beer on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't two or three casts that done had a fish on it. Right. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it just kept getting better all night long. Mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, yep. Brown with root beer. And, and uh, it may go up there right now and not get them to touch it. may have to go back to a brown to brown. Uh, uh, you can get any moonlight at all. Maybe just a... Uh, Solid watermelon, or you may have to have the watermelon with the orange on it. It's mm -hmm. just uh, mm -hmm. sometimes that, that just that little subtle change. Uh, uh, whether you fish a, a black fly with just a little touch of red on the back of it, or right. uh, uh, even the, the head color, you know, from a brown head to yeah. a black head or something like that, might, might be just enough to make them fish what they want. Yeah. Once you get on it, I mean, you'll catch a few, but once you get on that color, <laughs> you find out they're everywhere. Yeah, I, you know, Mike, we, it's folks, uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't take a lot of change up there, but if you're fishing up there and, and you're, you, you know, you're in that 15 to 20 cash range and you've not had a bite, you need to be changing something. Yeah. Them, because, uh, uh, you know, I told you we're setting the boat in about 24, 25 feet. And, you know, this coming weekend, that may be 27, 28 feet. Yeah. But a lot of the fish, a lot of the fish are coming uh, in there in that 12 to uh, 18 out to 24 foot range, you know. And, and you'll get some bites right there in that 23, 24 foot. You know, the last pickup you make on your jig or spinnerbait, well, it'll be right there in the other boat. We won't hit it. But 
uh, we've had several, you know, a lot of the fish are coming out there in that 12 to 18 foot range. Uh, they seem to move up a little bit there the yeah. other night, Mike, sure and that was because it's so dark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure it is. You know, uh, uh, to start with, uh, the stars were out, and, and you still had some reflections off the clouds, a uh, few clouds there uh, from sunset, and then it kind of got a little darker because the clouds moved in. And, and when that happened, it seemed like uh, within an hour or so, they were, we're getting more bites in there when you bait the first or second pickup on it rather than the 15th or 20th, yes. you know, uh, fishing it out next to the boat. So, uh, uh, but yeah, you know, be prepared for that. But the color, uh, like I said, if you, if you, you know, making 15, 20 casts and you hadn't had a bite and you're on a, what you think's a good place, uh, you probably need to change something. Change the color of the trailer, change the color of the bait. Uh, just do a little swapping up and, 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 you know, let them fish tell you what they want. Uh, like he said, it, it just is, instead of a brown and brown, a jig with brown chunk, you might have the root beer or an orange chunk or a black chunk on it or vice versa. You know, I caught a lot of fish up there on a the black with an orange chunk, and that moon's about half full. Uh, especially after they come over the moon. And, you know, uh, if you're catching those, catching them smallmouth on North Lake or any lake right now, and you're putting them in the live well uh, for a tournament weigh-in or whatever, nine out of ten times you'll find your live wells full of crawdads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've digested or whatever. Just kind of look at the <clears throat> color of them there. And you'll see what you need to be fishing with, yes, sir. Uh, because uh, the, you know they that that's a telltale sign right there what they're feeding on, and what color they are, and uh, uh, you know you get a the brighter the night, the lighter the bait, the darker the night, the darker the bait. In other words, if you're in a full moon up there and it's cloudy and pouring down rain or trying to rain and it's pitch black dark and the fog's in there and you couldn't tell if the moon was full or not, I just about guarantee you black would probably be your best color. Be good to start with. Be good to start with, exactly right. So, uh, uh, you know, but but don't be afraid to change, folks. Uh, just change a little bit, get down there and get you something a little different color than what you're fishing with, make a few casts with it and, and uh, you know, you're going to find something that they're going to bite. Uh, but, because we, you know, we feel like right now it's it's been awful good last couple of months, up there, Mike. It sure has. And, uh, you know, even if you get on a color like brown, you may go real light, like the pumpkin seed or something, mm -hmm. or you may have to go real dark brown, brown. just almost yeah. black. You know, yeah, just, I, uh, there's so many different shades of each color that uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it, you may buy two baits and, and not realize that they're they're different. And get up out the lake, and you're just catching the heck out of them on one, and you lose it, and then you put the other one on. You know, I can't catch no fish on this, and it ain't no good. Well, it may have been a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. And, and and a lot of the fly, at least bucktail flies, yep. bear hair fly, you know, they're 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 different colors. Yep. You know, the bucktails die up different. Uh, the bear, you know, even though they're brown, they're mm -hmm. a different shade of brown. Different shade. And uh, uh, but uh, this 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 bait right here, uh, where's the brown at? There's the brown. Right here is Scotty Mayfield chocolate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't call it any plainer than that. If you throw that open went in there in the freezer and got your chocolate ice cream out and throw that jig in the, down the box, you wouldn't see it. Mm -mm. It's okay. the same color as that ice cream. Yep. So uh, that's why we call it Scotty Mayfield chocolate. And uh, uh, because, <laughs> uh, you know, it looks like the chocolate ice cream. And uh, so that's what color brown it is. And then we start from there, and it's even a darker brown than that. And, and uh, uh, it just gets darker and darker. And then you get to where it's real light brown. Uh, it, it, it just, uh, just you know, uh, it looks almost white. It's, yeah. it, it's a sandy, it's, a, it's more of a sandy brown. You know uh, some of those uh, bucktails that we fish with, 
uh, in a real bright night, that's kind of what you're looking for. Yes, sir. Uh, something a little more transparent, you know, uh, at, at, uh, that kind of thing. So anyway, don't be afraid to change up, uh, change colors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're going to move right along uh, uh, with the things, and, and right quick, uh, we'll make a few quick announcements here. Uh, uh, at Kingston City Park, remember they're going to start uh, the third uh, or tomorrow, and uh, on Thursday, and then the fourth on Friday. They got a lot of activities planned for down there, so you folks in that area be be prepared for that, the boat races, raft races, uh, food, games for the kids, just a little bit of everything. Clinton, uh, on the 4th, they're going to be, uh, which will be Friday there, uh, they're at Lakefront Park, they got a lot of activities for the uh, 4th of July celebration there in Clinton. Uh, you know, get down there and, and make sure you attend that. Uh, just, I had a whole list of stuff that was going on there and, and left my paper laying on the desk <laughs> uh, after I printed it all off and everything, walked off and left it. Uh, Oak Ridge, are going to be at Bissell Park. A lot of activities planned there. They got the uh, community bands going to be playing. Yes. Uh, and I thought they said they were going to, it's either 5.30 or 7.30 and then the fireworks at, uh, uh, I think, 10, 9.30 or 10 anyway. Uh, so, you know, be prepared for those three places right there. Uh, they're all right here local uh, within the Tri-County area and, and uh, you know, make your plans accordingly. Uh, if you don't already know that, thought I'd pass that information along to you. Uh, right quick, uh, all the sponsors of the Let's Go Fishing Show, uh, talked to them this week, and they all want to convey to everybody to have a happy and a safe Fourth of July. And, uh, you know, we're talking about the sign shop. Adrian and, and, and uh, Amy down there, just all kinds of signs and, and, and anything in the sign business that you're looking for. Edgemore Outdoors. Uh, Chuck's. Uh, I'm not supposed to use the proprietor's name. He asked me not to do that. But I, uh, you know, you can't say enough about that guy and, and, and his wife over there at Edgemore Outdoors. Uh, uh, Jim, I'm trying not to say your name as much as possible, but I can't help myself. I want to say happy 4th of July to all my sponsors. Uh, but Edgemore Outdoors, Citizens First Bank, uh, those folks are just, just wonderful. You know, uh, all kind of, and, you know, banking anymore is, is electronic everywhere. And they've got that. Uh, they're they're right in there with with anybody and everybody. Plus, they got five locations right here close. Tim's Tire, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, just uh, you know, if any kind of tires you need, uh, check with them. I guarantee you won't beat their price. Uh, and uh, the, these truckers, they come in there. You know they're having tar trouble out here on the interstate, man. They're just they send help up there to them and this, that, and the other. That you can't beat them. Uh, Knox Area Rescue Ministries. Anything you can do to help that group of people is well, greatly appreciated. Uh, I heard uh, Rick Cox Construction Mike won the uh, Dragon Boat race they had over there at uh, Concord Park. You might know him. I might know him. I think we do. Uh, congratulations to Rick and his group of people. Uh, that's how they raise money uh, for a CARM. Uh, you pay so much to be a rower uh, or to enter the boat and this, that, and the other. It, it, and it's a great fundraiser for that, for that uh, organization. Uh, Reynolds Racing and Marine. Uh, Glenn's got a world of knowledge. Uh, you saw that on the little tape that I shot down there the other day about the pontoon boats. Uh, he's got the express, uh, the veranda pontoon boat, and I looked at a beautiful, uh, you know, the veranda pontoon boat that he's got down there is, is a beautiful rig. Mike, it's a pleasure pontoon. You can fish off of it. 
but it's it, it, you know it's got the ski bar in the back and then everything and the change room uh, up there and under the couch and this that and the other uh, you know uh, but you could fish off of it but he has a pontoon down there uh, that uh, that's set up for got the bass seats up in the front express express uh, and and it's made with the same deck that that veranda's made out of solid aluminum deck on, on the thing uh, it's it's built the deck the bottom and everything's built from the same place uh, it's just the top part of it of how it's rigged off it's uh, rigged out you know with the seats and stuff and then and, and not near as much couch room and stuff as that pleasure boat's got but man it's nice beautiful mm -hmm. it's it's got some beautiful graphics on the side uh, if it hadn't been raining I meant to get it on the camera but uh, Glenn's got those things and, and uh, he's got special prices for the whole month of July so uh, you want to get down there and check that out there's still plenty of summer left and uh, if you're in the business to upgrade uh, uh, or repair your boat, whether it be a pleasure boat, a uh, bass boat or whatever, he's got a beautiful 250 Pro XS sitting right there on the rack just waiting on somebody to come in and, and put that, you know, let him put that thing on your boat. And uh, got smaller engines back there in the back of, on, in boxes if you want something smaller. Uh, so get by down there and see him. Uh, Rocky Top Outdoors. Uh, I guess, Mike, they're in Rocky Top, Tennessee now. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I mean, you know, they, they uh, yeah, it's not, it's no more Lake City. It's, it's Rocky Top, Tennessee. So you got Rocky Top Outdoors up there. Uh, Andrew Howard and his staff uh, there at his place, uh, 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 you know, looking for bait tackle uh trout stuff that you know uh, just stop by there and check them out they're just a, uh, uh i think a couple of tents two or three tents from uh, from the uh, overpass there on the interstate uh going up the, the old highway there 116 headed towards uh Caribou, so uh can't miss them and then down here at, at uh, on the west end of town jay's thrift and more uh uh Jay Williams down there, uh, or Jason Williams, uh, you know, a little bit of everything, folks. He, yeah. he goes to auctions and buys stuff, uh, you know, and, and I guarantee you, check them out. You know, check them out. They, they, there's, there's a little bit of everything in the store down there. So uh, uh, go down here to Bruner old shop, Bruner's Old Shopping Center. Yeah, that's it. And he's right in there. and. And it's uh, Jay's Thrift and Motor. Check that out and see if you can help them. And let those all those sponsors know uh, that you appreciate them putting on the Let's Go Fishing Show. Because I definitely couldn't do it without them. Okay. Uh, Herschel, how much time have we got? 11 minutes. That's just enough time, Mike, for me to tell about the... Uh, okay, this and right here is real important. Jack Rains, this is for you. <laughs> We got to have them lights fixed up there at point 19. Right, Mike? No doubt about that. Well, you know, or we're going to have to sign a petition, and if we can't, if we do, we can. I can get 25, 30, 40 people up there uh, on, off the boat ramp just about any night. So uh, uh, you can't see the back down the ramp, Jack. We got to have them fixed. I'm leaving it up to you. But there, we were up there Saturday night, and they're not fixed. The three lights three poles down at the end of the boat or the parking lot the one in the middle was the only one burning and it's a single bulb pointing out in the middle of the parking lot the one on the right side is not burning at all and then the, the double light that's right there at the corner of the boat ramp neither side of it was right burning so uh just give you a rundown i know you'll take care of it for us and, and uh uh, we'd sure appreciate it, but that definitely we need to get that taken care of uh, up there and, and 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 see what the deal is. It may just be a cinch, bad. Could be. Could be. The, the, I think the light's good. Just the sensor's bad, and not turning the light on. Uh, okay. Photo of the month of June was Hayden Graham, age 15, Decatur, Tennessee. 
Tennessee, fishing uh, fish weighed 30 pounds on an ultralight rod. Now he was fishing behind my sister's house there in Polecat Creek. And I've got that picture on my phone and I was supposed to send it to Herschel and let him put it on the screen and I didn't do it. Did I? Okay, he's hunting it, saying, I thought maybe I might have. Man, that's the ugliest catfish I've ever Ooh. seen, Mike. Oh. There it is. Oh, my goodness. It, folks, Ooh. goodness gracious alive. But anyway, that's the photo of the month for June, and that is one ugly catfish. Well, he's proud of it, though. He's proud of it. <laughs> I, yeah, I had that coming. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a bad-looking yeah. catfish, folks. So yeah. anyway, congratulations to... Uh, Hayden, and I'll find out from my sister where to get him a shirt and what size to wear. Thank you for that photo, Herschel. Uh, I remember now I gave you the phone instead of me doing it. Yeah, okay, yeah. that was how that got there. That's good. Uh, Clinch River chapter of Trouts Unlimited has got their uh, Clinch River cleanup scheduled for uh, uh, July the 12th. Buzz Buffington need to get in contact with them if you're interested in participating in that and that's a, a definitely a good cause uh, buzz is the president of the uh, uh, trouts unlimited chapter there in clinch river and uh, uh, his phone number is 463-7167 that's 463-7167 and i'll tell about this again uh, there july the 10th uh, and uh, mention that again for that uh, event right there so we can get some help for that. Uh, those guys tell me it's amazing what they get out of the river up there, Mike. Uh, so now we're going to the tournament schedule. Uh, <clears throat> let me get this up here right here for sure. Uh, the catfish guys, here we go. <clears throat> Marty Carpenter and the East Tennessee Catfish Anglers. Uh, Mike, uh, their tournament is uh, the 4th, uh, must be Friday night. <coughs> They're going through uh, Saturday night. Uh, and it's at Fort Loudon and the time's to be announced. Uh, and I haven't heard from Marty, but I'm sure <clears throat> if you were to show up over there before 7 o'clock, you'd probably be able to get in. Yeah. Because uh, basically all their other, that's the earliest they have uh, their uh, tournaments there. Uh, and it may, you know, I don't know, it may be a night tournament. Uh, so what I would do would be call Marty at 310-1328 and uh, check out the uh, East Tennessee Catfish Anglers. Uh, like I said, their, their tournament schedule for this weekend. Don't know if it'll be uh, tomorrow and, and Saturday or it's a night tournament. <coughs> it's just got to be announced on the, on the sheet here. Um, that's one of them where you leave your bag at home and bring your wheelbar in. <laughs> yeah, that's one of them, Mike. Yeah, you don't need a fish bag. You need a wheelbar. All right. Uh, yeah, and, and may need a man lift. I don't know. <laughs> it's know. the biggest now. Yeah, okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about, next tournament that, that's coming up is July the 12th, and that's the uh, James Knuckles Phoenix uh, uh, conjunction tournament, the orange and white divisions. Pick your division you want to fish. Uh, that'll be at Tom Fuller Park, and that is a night tournament. Uh, 3 p.m. to ease off. Let's see, Saturday, 3 p.m. Uh, till ease off time so you can register that's the restoration will be Saturday starting at 3 o'clock 3 p.m. and then the tournament uh, is 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. so uh, we'll we'll mention that again next week okay and then uh, we got several Heartland tournaments going on here just to mention a few of those uh, let's see Mike uh, here we go watch bar dam uh, that's July the 12th. Uh, then Watch Bar Caney Creeks, July the 12th and July the 26th. Uh, let's see. Uh, Watch Bar Lake, uh, Lad, <coughs> Lad Landing is July the 19th. 
Uh, and then Fort Loudon Canal is July the 12th and the 26th. So, uh, you know, Milton Hill, you got one July the 12th, and that's uh, at Carbide Park Ramp at Milton Hill. And a lot of these old hickories and stuff, we, I don't know if anybody would want to venture down that way. Fort Loudon, Louisville, uh, July the 25th, or July the 11th and July the 25th. Uh, at 6.30 p.m. until 1 a.m. over there at Fort Loudon at Louisville. And then they come right back here uh, uh, July the 12th, Spring City Boat Dock, uh, right down there again. Then you got uh, Fort Loudon is over here July the 11th and July the, the 25th at the canal. And it just, uh, there's Normandy, Tim's Ford, uh, pretty much, we've got Douglas, Center Hill. Uh, this goes right on, Mike. We're back in, down into the fall season right there again. So plenty of those fishing tournaments, folks, if you want to get in on them. Uh, they also have a Wildcat at Point 19. I think it's on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Six, I believe it's 6 to 9 or 6 to 10, something, something like that. Did you say three minutes, Herschel? Yeah. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> whatever you're doing this weekend, folks, please be careful. Uh, watch out for the, the other guy, for sure. Uh, and, and remember about your boat. Uh, you know, uh, it's fine and dandy with two or three people in it, but when you throw five or six, it gets a little heavier, a little deeper in the water. Yep. And... Uh, uh, one thing I did want to mention that I forgot, Mike, right quick, is they have the park opened up down there at uh, Kingston Steam Plant, there back in there at Swamp Pond Circle. And uh, it's got a, a double ramp, wheelchair accessible, picnic tables, bathroom facilities, paved parking lot. Uh, I haven't been over there to check it out yet. I've just seen a lot of people putting in there, but I haven't been there myself. Got a floating dock. Yeah, I put uh, in twice there. You put in twice there put already? Twice, yeah. Well, how was it? Yeah, pretty good ramp. Pretty good ramp. Okay, yeah. well, heck, I didn't know you'd got off that much, Mike. I need to keep a closer eye on you over there. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, and then out on the uh, channel bank, they've got couple of docks out there so uh, be a good thing to check out uh, but uh, Herschel says we got 90 seconds so we want to be careful folks and uh, uh, you know have a happy fourth and a safe fourth of July celebration Mike you do the same uh, God bless you and hope to see you next week